welcome back. The amalgamation of northern and southern protectorates of Nigeria in 1914 by the British overlord has remained controversial. Some believe it was contrived by the colonial authority to sustain the unenviable northern protectorate. This group believe that the north has remained an economic parasite on the naturally endowed southern protectorate of Nigeria. But the north posits that the marriage was between an ordered and cultured society on the one hand and on the other hand between an impetuous, aggressive and savage group. Even the found, founding fathers of Nigeria did not help matters. Is this really a problem? I'm being joined by Monde Ubani and Shete Oludele, both with me in the studio, both public affairs analysts. You're welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. Good afternoon, Nigerians. Mm, and happy Independence Day mm -hmm. to you both. Same here. I don't want to ask you how you're spending your Independence Day <laughs> because you're here with us in the studio. <laughs> so um, you heard what I said. I, maybe I want to start with um, Mr. Ubani. What do you feel when people say that the amalgamation was a mistake? What, what, what should you say to such people? Well, you have to uh, look at it from maybe your own point of view and then probably arrive at a conclusion. At the point the amalgamation took place, uh, it was for the economic interest of Britain. You know, they, they had to consider their own economic interest and it was clearly advantageous for them at that point, you know, to join North and Southern protectorates. Uh, but the point is that nations do not emerge that way. Okay. Even after you have probably due to circumstances at that time that made it imperative for you to do what you did, that the opportunity must also be given to the people to decide whether they want to be together. And that opportunity up to now has not been given uh, to the Nigerian people to actually decide you know, whether they all uh, wanted to be the way the British uh, had done it. And that is a critical problem. And, and, and as long as that problem has not been solved, you know, it will remain, you know, uh, something that is, uh, you know, probably drawing, drawing us backwards. Now, the point is this. If you want to be together, nations emerge by consensus, and then you draw up the terms and conditions under which you want to be together. As I said earlier, that opportunity was never given, and it, because it, it served their economic interests at the point where they did what they did. You know, so if we have not really sat down as a nation to look at ourselves holistically, look at what the imperatives for staying together and whether the terms and conditions are fulfilled, it will remain the way it is, you know, that people will still be agitating and that agitation continues even up to now. Okay, mm -hmm. I want to put the terms and conditions mm -hmm. and imperatives to one mm -hmm. side and mm -hmm. just say, repeat what you said to Mr. Uh, Chateau and say, you know, we haven't been given the opportunity as a nation to decide whether we want to be together or not. But some would say that having lived together, as it were, for 59 years, if someone, a man and a woman, have co you know, cohabited together, you may as well call that a marriage. So are we saying, he's saying, you know, are we saying that all these years we haven't benefited from our togetherness? Please comment. Um, we have benefited to a little extent. Okay. Yes, but before I do, very quickly, I, I'd like to corroborate what he said. We should uh, understand amalgamation within the context of a colonial state. And the colonial state uh, had um, predetermined and um, economic and political interests, you know. And uh, was, there was a deeper interest of, um, of um, you know, extending its... Um, its control beyond its immediate territory. That was the era of, um, you know, empire states, an empire state that had satellite states. Mm -hmm. And the satellite states, you know, existed to serve specific economic interests of the metropole, you know, or the core capitalist states. Okay. So we should understand it within that context. But since um, independence or political or flag independence, mm -hmm. um, we, we that question might be meaningful that, you know, what has the political class been able to do to address the contradictions and the structural imbalances that were occasioned by colonial rule? Okay, yeah. And like I say, yes. that's, that's yes. the conversation we now yeah. have to yes. have. But before yes. that, yes. may I call you Monday? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, and may I call you Dele? Yes, it's so, okay for me. Yes. Okay. Um, Dele just said um, that 
we need to come together to determine the circumstances of our coexistence. Okay. Um, but I want to ask you, know, and he also said that we have benefited a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you share his view that we've benefited a little bit before I go on to ask the next question. <laughs> Except it, I didn't there, have the opportunity no to expatiate. Uh, there is no way we would have stayed we'll together to for 59 yeah. without benefiting. Okay. You know, a little. If bit. A little okay, so I want you to mean. help us quantify mm. that little bit so that mm. we don't lose focus of, you know, as they say, we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. To what extent have we benefited as a nation? There is benefit in 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 in, in larger population. Okay, strength. You know, numbers. yeah, there is strength. So much strength in it, mm. and then we have uh, our diversities. You know, is clearly understood. You know, by some of I I I served in North. Okay. Mm, I served in Kano. I did my youth service in Kano. And originally, you're from. I'm from from East. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm from Abia State. Okay. You know, so when the opportunity came for me to really understand, you know, study the cultures of the, of the Northern people, they call Northern. I went to Kano and I saw, you know, our differences, you know, and, and our similarities. You know, there are things that are similar, and a lot of Igbos are also married to the, I mean, to the people from the from the North and, and vice versa. If you do business also with some of them and all that, some of them are very honest, the same thing with Igbos, you know. So what I'm trying to say, without that, you know, we being brought together, you know, interact. to interact, you know, there wouldn't have been that advantage of knowing, you know, some of their things and then knowing us and all that. So there are, there are advantages, okay. you know, but the basic thing is how do nations emerge? And that is a critical thing. You know, and you know, taking into cognizance, you know, the way we've been wobbling, you know, as a nation, wouldn't it have been better if it is done things were done differently? Okay. You know, so we have the right foundation. Yeah, to the foundation is said because Bible says, when the foundation be destroyed, there is nothing the righteous can do. If you look at the foundation of this country, it's very shaky. For 59 years, we have not been able to have a right, firm foundation. Okay. Issue of value. You know, you know, what do we really understand as our objective as core a nation, values. core values, what do you want to achieve as a nation? And that's where leaders come into, into a position of, of authority. They, they, they start doing things that are different, at variance with nationhood. You know, in appointment, in some of the statements we make, and there is nothing that, you know, shows there is a core understanding of what nationhood is all about and how to cement relationship and build a strong, viable nation that would be in the interest of every other person. You know, so that, that is the point. So unless we sit down to agree on those core values, you know, we keep on wobbling. And my fear is that even in 100 years' time, wow. you know, our children will also be sitting on television and be talking about the problems of, you know, nationhood, you know. Wow. Whereas other nations like Singapore, like Malaysia, that were doing better than, you know, in the 60s, you know, I, I maybe by that time... They would have gone to, they would be living in the moon. Oh, my. <laughs> May that not happen to us. But you said you didn't have a chance to expand on what you mm. had said about well, us benefiting a little bit, or was there something else? Well, the, let me make the point that um, the most states are federating, and very few states are disintegrating, except there are structural and historical base imperatives to disintegrate. Okay. There the, are the, the strong benefits, you know, to federate, to become bigger you know, economic and political benefits. Okay. The, the U.S. Federation, an Indian Federation, the yeah. Swiss Confederation, yeah. you know, Isn't Canada, etc., European, European Union, mm. you know, NAFDAQ mm. and Maghreb Union, yeah. you know, uh, and Mint and BRICS should be understood within that context. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's, um, there, there are political and economic advantages that Nigeria is bigger, you know. Uh, we should ordinarily you know, exploit those, you know, the, the size, you know, and the diversity to advantage. Okay. Well, except that, uh, you know, somewhere along the line, the politicization of our diversities, okay. you know, have, uh, have produced and deepened, you know, you know, uh, the contradictions uh, within Nigeria, mm. within Nigeria. Okay. You know, um, secondly, you know, he talked about diversity, you know. Uh, the, the the diversity is um, it's, it's equally commendable, mm -hmm. but it it's, uh, it is equally produced what we call in political science the question of identity politics, okay. you know religious identity, ethnic identity, religio religious identity, regional identity, sub-regional identity, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Well, I said that the Nigerian state, you know, has lacked the capacity to mediate, you know, the centrifugal forces that underpin these identities, you know. Uh, we Which are? I want you to identify one of these centrifugal forces that underpin 
these identities. I like, I like that expression. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> the, the, you know, some of the centrifugal forces are the politicization of religion, okay. the ethnicization of politics, mm. you know, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay. You know, okay. the, these are issues that, that threaten the polity. These are issues that threaten the, the superstructural foundations okay. of the Nigerian states, okay. you, you know. You know, you know. Yeah. The, 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 the other benefits, you know, I, I could mention, well, you know, one or two others, uh, you know, the, the fact of uh, the, 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 the economic size, the economic advantage, the comparative cost advantage that w w could accrue to Nigeria as a nation state. Okay. Uh, and uh, the political implication in terms of power politics in the region and sub-region. Okay. But there's a lot more to talk about mm. the minuses. Okay. You know, than the, the positive. Yes, than the positive. Okay, than well, the well let, me, let, me, the let me just positive. say at this point, and like a kind of milestone, that if I get the two of you gentlemen right, you're both saying, you're not necessarily saying we should go our separate ways. You're saying we should get the foundation for staying together right. Is that correct? Well, that, would that be a correct summation? In, in my own uh, uh, case, uh, I, I appreciate the fact that due to their economic interests, they marched us together. Yes. And we came together with all our differences. Now, what you need to do for such a country that emerged in such a manner to stay together and live healthily is now to apply the, the, the right nutrition. Okay. If you don't apply the right nutrition, then that particular uh, this thing you have uh, built may likely die. Mm. It becomes uh, dead mm. due to the fact that the right food is not being given. Now, we are said to be a federation. In practice, there is nothing federating about you. Mm. In the, what you are practicing is pure unitary system of governance, you know, and that's why we still have to go back to the basic question of restructuring. Mm. Uh, I agree that we have come together, you know, by British, uh, uh, you know, idea, you know, even though we didn't sit down to agree. Now that we have said to be a, we are said to be a federation. What are the ingredients of federalism? What are the right structure for you to operate those different, uh, you know, this in, in a country that is as big as Nigeria? And that has not been done. The military incursion distorted everything about Nigeria. And so what is being fed is that you are being given the wrong nutrition. And as long as the wrong nutrition is being fed to this particular country called Federal Republic of Nigeria, you find out that if care is not taken, if care is not taken, that particular federation will die a natural death. So that's the issue. So it, we all agree that there is advantages in coming together and all that. But if the right food is not being applied, which is what all the people that have studied this nation is now saying, the elders, hmm. we have looked at the structure. There is so much imperfection in this structure. And if you allow this structure to continue, Nigeria will atrophy, no. Nigeria will die a natural death. Interesting. Mm. Okay, well, we just started this discussion on our amalgamation and, mm. and whether it's the right, we're, we're on the right platform. And my guests in the studio have given us to understand that we are not, we're lacking the right foundation and something needs to be done in order for us to proceed. I, I, I'm sure I'm speaking for both of them. Um, we're just going to go on a brief break. And when we come back, we'll continue to explore the unity, the unity of our nation further. Do stay tuned. <laughs>